NCERT Class 7 Science, Chapter 12, Earth, Moon, and Sun. In this chapter, we'll explore the rotation of the Earth, its revolution around the Sun, and see how these movements change our day and night, as well as the seasons. We'll also look at the changing view of the night sky and understand the amazing science behind solar and lunar eclipses. So, get ready for an exciting journey through space with me as we uncover how the Earth, Moon, and Sun work together to shape our lives. One morning in Kanyakumari, 12-year-old Rashmika was cycling to school. She noticed that the shadows of coconut trees were long in the morning, but shorter in the afternoon. She wondered, why does this happen? Does the sun really move across the sky or is it the earth that moves? We observe every day that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. But why does this happen? Let's understand. Have you ever enjoyed riding a merry-go-round? When it spins, the objects around you appear to move in the opposite direction. In the same way, as the earth rotates on its axis, the sun appears to move across the sky from east to west. In reality, the sun is almost fixed. It is the earth that spins on its axis. How does the earth spin? Think of a spinning top, a fan or a ball. The earth too spins in the same way. Its axis passes through the North Pole and the South Pole. It completes one full rotation in about 24 hours. If you look from above the North Pole, you will see that the Earth rotates anti-clockwise, that is, from west to east. That is why we see the sun rise in the east and set in the west. So remember, the sun does not move. It is the Earth that rotates, creating the beautiful illusion of sunrise and sunset. Now, let us understand how day and night occur on Earth. Imagine the torch as the sun and the globe as the Earth. When you shine the torch on the globe in a dark room, only one half is illuminated while the other remains dark. The half facing the light experiences day, and the half in darkness experiences night. In India, sunrise occurs first in the eastern part. When you rotate the globe from west to east, you can see light falling on the east first, and then gradually on the rest. Thus, it is the Earth's rotation from west to east that causes the day-night cycle. Now, imagine standing at the equator. In the morning, the sun appears on your right in the east. By noon, the sun is overhead. By evening, it moves leftwards and disappears in the west. Then night begins and stars fill the sky. Centuries ago, Galileo discovered the property of a pendulum. Huygens used it to make pendulum clocks. Later in the 19th century, Leon Foucault used a long pendulum to show a simple proof of Earth's rotation. Today, a 22-meter long Foucault pendulum hangs in the Constitution Hall of India's new parliament building symbolizing the link between India and the vast cosmos. Now look at the stars. Between March and May, if you observe the Big Dipper, you will notice it appears to move around the Pole Star. This is because Earth's axis points close to the Pole Star. The Pole Star seems fixed, while all other stars appear to circle around it. Astrophotographers captured this motion as star trails, beautiful arcs of light in long exposure photos. Did you know? Ancient Indian astronomer Aryabhata had already explained this. In his 5th century text Aryabhatiya, he wrote, 
Just as a man in a moving boat sees stationary objects as moving backward, so also the stars appear to move westward because of Earth's rotation. Aryabhata's calculation of Earth's rotation, 23 hours, 56 minutes, 4 seconds, is amazingly close to today's accepted value. So the rising and setting of the sun, the cycle of day and night, and the apparent motion of the stars, all are results of Earth's majestic rotation. The Earth not only rotates on its axis, it also revolves around the sun. This motion is called revolution. The Earth completes one full revolution in about 365 days and six hours. Because of this revolution, the view of stars in the night sky keeps changing. Each month, if you observe the stars at the same time, you'll notice they have shifted position. In fact, the Bill and Powera tribes of Western India use the appearance of certain star patterns as markers for the arrival of monsoon rains. But what about seasons? The reason for changing seasons is the tilt of the Earth's axis. As the Earth orbits the sun, it always remains tilted. This tilt, along with the spherical shape of the Earth, gives rise to seasons. In June, the northern hemisphere tilts towards the sun. Sunlight falls more directly and for longer hours, resulting in summer. In December, the northern hemisphere tilts away. Sunlight is weaker and for fewer hours, causing winter. In the southern hemisphere, the seasons are reversed. Around 21 June, the longest day of the year occurs, called the summer solstice. Around 22 December, the shortest day and longest night occur, the winter solstice. On 21 March and 23 September, day and night are equal, known as the spring and autumn equinox. At the poles, the sun can remain visible for six months straight, followed by six months of darkness. At the equator, however, day and night are always equal, 12 hours each, and seasonal variation is less noticeable. Now, can the sun's light ever be blocked? Yes, by the moon. When the moon comes between the earth and the sun, blocking sunlight, a solar eclipse occurs. You may wonder, how can the tiny moon cover the huge sun? Think of this activity. Hold your thumb up in front of a friend's head at a distance. Even though your thumb is much smaller, it can block the entire head. Why? Because your thumb is closer. Its apparent size looks similar. The same happens with the sun and the moon. The sun is huge, but far away. The moon is small, but close. Their apparent sizes in the sky look nearly equal. That's why the moon can completely cover the sun. Planets like Mercury or Venus, though bigger than the moon, are much farther away, so they appear tiny. They cannot block the sun. When Venus passes in front of the sun, it looks like a small black dot, a rare event called the transit of Venus. Thus, seasons, solstices, and even solar eclipses are all beautiful results of the motions of the Earth and the Moon around the sun. The Moon is much smaller than the sun, yet during a total solar eclipse, it covers the sun completely. Why is this possible? Because the moon, though smaller, is much closer to us. So it appears almost the same size as the sun in our sky. Now think, when the Indian cricket team travels to Australia in December, should they carry winter clothes or summer clothes? That's right, summer clothes. Because in December, the southern hemisphere has summer. And here's another question. Why can a lunar eclipse be seen from a large part of the Earth, but a solar eclipse only from a small region? The answer lies in the shadows. Earth's shadow is huge, so many places can see a lunar eclipse. But the Moon's shadow is tiny. 
covering only a narrow strip of Earth. That's why total solar eclipses are rare and local. Now imagine, what if Earth's axis were not tilted at all? Then there would be no seasons. The weather would remain almost the same throughout the year. Did you know? Even the sun is not perfectly still. It wobbles slightly as planets orbit around it. Astronomers detect similar tiny wobbles in distant stars to discover exoplanets, planets beyond our solar system.